At the end of March 2022, a strict coronavirus lockdown starts in China. People are not allowed to leave their homes. Companies have to close. There is a shortage of food at home. Originally, four days of lockdown were scheduled, but it quickly becomes clear that it will be extended indefinitely. During the coronavirus lockdown, companies in China were supposed to close, while Doe was allowed to continue producing. How did you manage that, Mr. Schmidt? When we got the information that the lockdown will come, then our CFO Chang Ming informed or contacted the local government in Baihe town immediately where we are located. And uh, then he got the permission uh, for us uh, to work with around 220 people in our workshop, another 30 people in the validation center, of course under certain conditions, means that uh, people were not allowed to leave the locations anymore during the whole lockdown. Okay, so Joe was allowed to continue producing um, under certain conditions. What was the situation like at Tomak and Schenk, Mr. Legner? The two sites initially were closed and our employees had to stay at home. Later, we followed the Dürer example and managed to obtain a special permit. And then we had uh, in Schenk 65 people walking in the closed loop and in Homak 128. Mr. Schmidt, you mentioned that the special permit was subject to strict conditions. What were they like? The people had to wear uh, protective uh, gears like masks and special clothes. Uh, we need to make uh, regular disinfections of materials, rooms and so on. And furthermore, the people had to take a PCR test daily. Temperature were measured twice or three times a day even. And all the results then we put together and uh, reported to the local government daily. The willingness of the employees to live in the company during the closed loop production and to fulfill all these requirements is remarkable. But it also sounds like a lot of organizational effort. Can you both tell me more about that? Yes, sure. The employees were living in the company, which means that we, had, we needed sleeping bags, mattresses, sanitary items, and of course, tons of food. And in order to meet the government's expectations and requirements, we also had to purchase tons of uh, disinfectants, protective equipment, and corona tests, masks, and so on. Thank you, Mr. Legner. Mr. Schmidt, do you want to add something? Yes, of course. Uh, during the lockdown, of course, uh, transportation and the public traffic, everything was uh, closed mm -hmm. mainly. And uh, so it was difficult and necessary to organize transportation of materials into the factory, uh, but also the goods out of the factory. And uh, furthermore, we also need uh, to organize the transportation of goods from the harbor, from the customs, into our factory and uh, validation center. And uh, since uh, also the factories of our customers were locked down, uh, we also need to prepare a temporary storage for all the materials. So uh, really overnight we have then uh, leveled our neighborhood uh, ground and land yeah, where we put then all the goods from the factory there as a storage. I now want to ask someone who ate, slept and worked at the dirt site during closed loop production. Jenny, how did you experience that time? Yes, it was a memorable experience in my life. I'm an EHS specialist. In this closed loop production, my most important tasks are to manage various protection affairs, guarantee our colleagues' health, and report the daily health condition to government and our bosses. So every day, I was very anxious during the PCR tests and waiting for the test results. If there was one colleague got infected, our plant would be quarantined and taken over by the government. The closed loop production would be filled. Finally, we were luck there is no one colleague got infected. The closed loop production was very successful. It divorced of all our efforts. Let me sum up. An extraordinary commitment in extraordinary times. Would you like to add something, Mr. Schmidt? Yes, of course. Dear colleagues from Do, Schenk and Homag, also on behalf of my colleague Peter Legner, I would like to thank you very, very much for your great contribution to work under such very difficult circumstances, which was really an extraordinary contribution 
not only to the company, but also to our customers. Thank you very much.